Haruto is playing his handheld game system while his sister watches anime. It looks like he won new parts for a game. But all of a sudden, he remembers that he needs to find a helper, a servant who will go to school with him. Charlotte, his sister, asks him about it, but Haruto says it's not important and suggests they go for a walk. Instead, he almost lets slip that he told everyone about the assistant, but he stops himself. He still has three months, which is good, but he hasn't found a good candidate yet. Then, all of a sudden, he hears a strange sound coming from the forest. He walks down a path that leads to a village. He can recall. He tells them that this village is where the skeletons live. When one of them sees him, they all greet him at once and call themselves the skeleton masters. They remind him that it's been five years since he beat the summoner, who brought them to this world. They don't know why they started following him, but they did. After that, he shows them where they've been living in secret. Johnny, who used to be their captain, is now in charge of the skeletons. A lot of people Johnny wonders. If Haruto has a request and takes the chance to ask Johnny why there are other monsters in the village, Johnny tells him that these are wandering monsters, which are creatures without a home that Miss Play brought from other places. Everyone listens to her. Furrows don't have to worry about finding a place to live. Haruto starts to worry that things might be getting out of hand because there are more monsters than before. But as long as they don't cause trouble, everything will be fine. As Johnny shows Haruto around the village, he encourages him to check out other parts of the town. He says that different places grow food for people to eat. Haruto is impressed by what they've done and wonders if the food is for other monsters since skeletons don't eat. The right way Johnny says that these harvests make it possible for them to feed more monsters. He says he'll show Haruto more of the village. During this conversation, Haruto realizes that Johnny is a kind, honest person who is liked by everyone and knows his place in the village. Besides that, he has a nice voice. He would be the perfect employee. But there is one problem, he talks too much. It's a shame that he never stops for a second. Johnny wonders if he is taking things too seriously or if he did something wrong. Haruto tells him that he isn't being too serious and that he likes his work. This compliment really shocks Johnny, and he finds it charming. He tells Haruto that he will work hard to make him happy and get more praise. Haruto tells Johnny that there are more places to see nearby, but he has to leave for now, so he suggests that they meet up again. He sits by a river again and thinks it's a good place to be alone and unwind. Did little. He knew that it would become a place where monsters would gather. All of a sudden, a golem appears next to him. The same one that the summoner called, and it surprises Naruto to see it here. It's a big golem that gives him a flower. When Haruto asks if the flower is for him, the golem says yes. The golem says it's a gift because the flower is pretty. Haruto realizes that the golem's voice is a way for it to show its appreciation. Surprisingly, the golem isn't scary at all, and Haruto doesn't mind being around it. He starts to think that, like his servant, this golem might be a good friend, but its size worries him. Haruto asks the golem if it plans to stay in the village, and the golem says that it likes the village, but it likes Haruto more. Haruto knows that the golem is telling him that it likes him as its master. Haruto is speechless when he realizes this because he didn't expect the golem to care about him. After this conversation, he keeps exploring the forests, but it's getting harder and harder for him to find a good assistant. He even thinks that if he wants to find a good one, he shouldn't be in a hurry when he gets home. Flay asks about the assistant he said he had. She doesn't understand how he became so smart all of a sudden. He remembers that he doesn't want an assistant because they always get him in trouble. He tells her, you don't serve me, which makes her cry. Another time, Charlotte comes up with a name for his Black Knight costume. She comes up with Schwarzer Ritter, which in German means, Black Knight. She says she got the idea from the internet. Her research shows that it has to do with destruction and creation, almost like a god. She thinks her brother will like it. She says she's sorry for dragging him into this and talks about how they come from a noble family. He doesn't say anything. In the end, we see Johnny greet the girls. He tells them that this is where all of Master Haruto's monsters are. 
Flay and Charlotte think this is a very good thing to do. They recommend giving the place a name. The Enchanted Garden and Johnny agrees that it's a good choice. When a group of adventurers face an ice dragon during a snowstorm, the group's leader says that they've finally gotten it under control. This dragon is a huge hybrid, and if you beat it, you'll get a big reward. But the heavy snow makes it hard for them to see, so they take advantage of the situation. The dragon is able to take off. Questions for Leo the leader. Why are they waiting? If they don't do something, the dragon will get away. However, a snowstorm causes the dragon to lose control and crash into a mountain, hurting itself badly. Leo told Gold about what happened. Apparently, a 50 meter long ice dragon flew in from the empire, but it crashed before it could enter the country. Haruto comes to the conclusion that it didn't get to their land. So it doesn't matter to them. His father agrees, but warns that the dragon could wake up and go on a rampage, putting many lives in danger. Also, there are demons in the area. So, he tells Haruto to look into Flay. Haruto hesitates and says that she only does what her master tells her. But Haruto is adamant about it. Flay gets angry, and Haruto asks her if she has any other reasons why she doesn't want to do it. Flay says that the dragon is probably not very young because of how big it is. It could be several hundred years old. In the past, dragons hid in mountains while humans and demons fought. She doesn't see why she should help a coward. When he sees a dragon like this, Haruto realizes that it might have something to do with him. Flay wants more time to think about the job. Haruto's father gives her time, but he tells her that she needs to act quickly because Flay is leaving. Charlotte tells her that she overheard the conversation about her behavior. Charlotte says she's sorry, and then she asks Flay if she can save the dragon. Charlotte thinks the dragon is probably very sad. Flay says that she didn't mean for things to happen the way they did. Haruto puts his hand on Flay's shoulder and tells her that what she wants is also what he wants. She says that she is willing to do what they want and that if they both ask for it, she will do it. She says that she didn't mean to get rid of those adventurers completely when they got to the mountainous area. Haruto uses his powers to find the dragon. He is surprised by how big it is, even though it seems to be hurting. Flay tells him that the group of adventurers is heading toward the dragon, so they need to act quickly. Before the adventurers get there, they'll have to hurry. At some point, the adventurers will run into the dragon. They get ready to attack with the goal of killing it quickly. But just as they were about to do that, Haruto comes in dressed as the Black Knight. He kicks one of the adventurers and says, I'm the Black Knight. He then uses his magical cubes to heal the dragon. The adventurers don't know what to think and ask who they are. Haruto seems to appear out of thin air. Flay asks the adventurers, who she calls scoundrels, what gave them the nerve to challenge a dragon's power. She says that in the end, they will all be burned to death. There are wounds on the adventurers. The Black Knight persona of Haruto takes off his helmet and looks happy. The Ice Dragon wakes up and tells Haruto how grateful it is. He says he stands for justice and calls himself the Black Knight. The dragon comes over and freezes Haruto with its cold breath when he asks what's wrong. Flay tells the dragon to stop treating her master so badly. Haruto responds by letting himself go and telling Flay to calm down and stop worrying. It might be on edge. Because the adventurers just attacked. Haruto tells the dragon that it wasn't a big deal that he saved it. But the dragon's response is aggressive, which suggests that it won't get better. If the ice dragon king attacks again, Haruto realizes in his mind that it's a female dragon because he can hear her voice, just like when he talked to Flay. He realizes that he can talk to people the same way. He asks her who she is, but she doesn't answer and instead asks Flay. Haruto instead asks Flay if the dragon really is a demon and why she is in demon form. Flay says that she likes being a demon better than being a person. If she asks nicely, Haruto will share everything with her. Flay keeps talking, which makes Haruto say that she's very talkative. Flay says that's all for now, and Naruto thinks the dragon is cool. The dragon says she didn't expect Haruto to be the demon king's reincarnation. It surprised her, 
so she says she's sorry she didn't help earlier in the battle and explains that she doesn't like fighting. Haruto understands and accepts that demons are all different. Then he asks her where she was before the adventurers came and attacked her. She says that she had been hiding in the mountains for about 300 years, leaving behind a peaceful life. Haruto is surprised by how long the time frame is and is eager for her to tell him more. She starts to tell what happened. The dragon says that when she was younger, she hid in caves and rarely came out. One day, a traveler who had taken shelter there dropped a book. She read it more than once and became interested in reading because of it. She finally decided to leave the cave and look around a nearby city. She turned into a person to hide when she saw so many books at once and ran to the nearest library. From then on, she was very impressed. She often turned into a human, went to the city, and brought new books back to her cave. She did this cycle over and over again. In the meantime, she kept learning more. She had a long time of being happy and at peace. But one day, the adventurers found her and attacked her. They burned all the books she had found, so she had no choice but to run away. This is why she's here now. When Flay hears her sad story about the burned books and escape, she starts crying. She feels sorry for her and agrees to let her join the group. She greets her in the demon garden and asks Haruto where she came from. Those words. Flay says that his little sister came up with the idea. Still, they are there to keep her safe. She says she wants to join them, and Haruto's words make her very happy. Since she has learned so much over the years, she may now have her own feelings. She is thankful that Haruto saved her and promises to treat him as her master. She is a blizzard dragon and is willing to die for him. Haruto is curious about the dragon, so he uses his magic to quickly make clothes for her. He was ready for this. She asks where the dress came from, and Haruto tells her that Flay already told her. She told him that he would explain it bit by bit as she introduced herself. He says that his real name is Haruto when he takes off his mask. He tells Haruto that he is the son of a count who runs the border not far from where they are. When Haruto asks her what her name is, she says she doesn't have one. She hopes he can give her one, though. She chooses the name Lisa in the end and says it to herself over and over to see if she likes it. She likes the name a lot. Then, Flay asks Haruto to explain a few things. She says that she was the first and that she is the second. She assumes that Lisa knows what that means because she says yes. Haruto jumps into the air and tells her to follow. Lisa opens her wings and flies by using them. As they fly away, Flay, who is still angry, watches them from the ground and starts chasing after them. Lisa and Haruto's journey continues. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more anime videos, please like and subscribe.